Hi. If the almighty algorithm has sent you here out of the blue, go check out the build video for this project. It'll fill you in on what this is and what I'm gonna be using it for. The link's down in the video description. If you're here because you bought a Mega Tree PCB kit and are putting together your own tree, this guide will show you how to use the Mega Tree Topper PCB. This is very similar in a lot of ways to my Mini Tree project, so if you've already built one of those, this will all be quite familiar. Unlike the Mini Trees, the structure of this tree is entirely up to you. I used a crank up speaker stand for mine and a PVC pipe and 3D printed joiner base, but you can use whatever you'd like. As such, this tutorial will only cover the assembly of the PCB components. I've made the 3D models for my tree available on printables if you'd like to replicate this exactly. The link is in the description below. I've also provided the 3D print files for the pole adapter in various sizes that you are welcome to use for your own tree. As far as tools go, you'll need strippers, a pack of about 100 small cable ties, some side cutters, a soldering iron, plenty of solder, and some tweezers. The last thing you'll need is some paint-on or liquid electrical tape. This is available under all kinds of names all over the place and online. Now let's dive in. Trim all of your pixel wires to the appropriate length and then strip and tin the ends. Make sure all your strings are exactly the same length or you'll have difficulty achieving even tension. You can use any pixel spacing you'd like as long as it's greater than 25 millimeters. Any smaller than that and the fixing system won't work. If you're using 25 millimeter pixels, make sure to trim them in such a way that you're left with the maximum possible length of wire from your last pixel. We need as much of that wire as possible to make soldering easier. Now look carefully at your topper PCB. On one side, all the pads are labeled. These are where you'll solder your strings. As you can see, every second lot of solder pads is reversed. This is because the strings need to alternate in direction so the data can flow up and down in a zigzag pattern around your tree. The solder pad labels need to face down once the tree is assembled. You might have noticed the slots cut out next to each set of pads. This is for the LED string to pass through. The LED string wires should go over the edge of the board, through the hole, and then be soldered onto the pads. This is so we're not placing any tension on the solder joints themselves, which would be likely to fail quite quickly. These PCBs were made by our friends over at PCBWay. They offer all kinds of PCB assembly and manufacturing services, as well as 3D printing and CNC machining. I've been using them for years and I've always been happy with their results. Their products are fairly priced and well made and their service has always been exceptional. Check them out at the link below if you need some parts machined or printed or need your own PCBs like these ones made. We're going to start by soldering our terminal boards, the H-shaped PCBs that will make up the bottom of our strings. The ones you receive in the kit or order from PCBWay will be slightly different from the ones I'm using here, but the instructions will remain the same. The terminal PCBs have solder points on the bottom of your string and another for your pigtail. The sides are labeled either input or output. These versions of the board are missing the labels, but yours will be correctly labeled. If you haven't soldered the PCB before, just place your soldering iron tip on the pad and feed solder into the joint slowly. The solder should flow onto the pad easily. Take your wires, Lay them on the blob of solder we put on the pad earlier and heat your wire with the iron. As your wire reaches the melting point of the solder, it'll fall inside the blob of solder on the pad. Remove the heat and your wire should be secure and the solder shiny. If you're new to soldering, I'd suggest practicing with one of the spare terminal PCBs included in the kit just to get your eye in. Using some tweezers is really helpful for ensuring the wire is held in the right place without burning your fingers too much. For my pixels, the dotted wire is the positive wire, so I double check the positive wire is in the correct place before soldering each one. Your pixels may be different. Tin each pad with plenty of solder, then solder your pigtail and pixels to the appropriate pads. 
The pigtail is installed on the labeled side on every board, regardless of input and output. For your first string, you'll use the input side, then your data and power will flow up to the topper, then back down the next string where you'll attach an output terminal board. Unlike the topper, the terminal boards are designed to use a small zip tie as strain relief for the pigtail and for the pixel string. I installed the zip ties after the waterproofing to ensure good coverage of the liquid electrical tape and no holes in the seal. Once you've installed your terminal board, wrap it end over end to keep your string of lights tidy and out of the way. I wrap them in electrical tape or an elastic band so they stay together. Solder each of your strings to the top PCB starting at one side and working your way around, making sure to feed them through the hole as shown in the diagram and solder them to the correct pads. A reminder, the strings will be in alternating directions. Test the strings as you finish each pair to ensure there are no shorts or issues. The topper has a shared ground plane but separate VCC for each pair of strings so you can run multiple power supplies without risk of killing them. Once you've soldered them all into place, we need to waterproof all the connections. After double and triple checking your wires all work correctly, cover every connection with your liquid electrical tape on the front and the back side. Follow the manufacturer's instructions and make sure to do at least a couple of coats. Water ingress will definitely kill your tree. Once cured, install your zip ties for strain relief for the pixel wire and pigtails. Now you can install your 3D printed pole adapter or other DIY solution and attach your topper to your tree. I'm using rubberized straps to attach my terminal boards to the base of the tree. This keeps the strings under constant tension and is the method I suggest you try as well. Again, if you want to replicate my tree, all the 3D prints are on printables and the link is in the description below. If you come up with your own mega tree, I'd love to see it. Send me over an email or leave a comment below telling me about it. Your mega tree topper is all ready to go. Just connect the pigtails to your controller of choice and you're set. If you'd like to see how I use this tree, check out my 2025 Christmas series linked below. And if you have any questions or feedback, please leave a comment and I'll do my best to get back to you. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll catch you next time.